Watching the English news on Future Television, I'm Yuma Nova and these are today's headlines. Future movement leader Saad Hariri urges everyone to cooperate for the well interest of Lebanon, pointing to a new leaf that will be opened after the election to fill the long-time vacuum. Prime Minister Tamam Salam receives in separate meetings at the Grand Sarai, Marada movement leader MP Slaiman Fanjiye as well as Saad Hariri. And the United States accuses the Syrian regime of using starvation as a weapon of war in Syria. Good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in. Future movement leader Saad Hariri is urging everyone to cooperate for the well interest of Lebanon, pointing out that a new page will be turned on Monday after the election of a head of state to fill the long-time vacuum. The country is on the threshold of a new phase and he hopes that everyone can cooperate for the well interest of Lebanon and all the Lebanese. He said this after meeting Maronite Patriarch Bshadadai in Kirke. Hailing the Patriarch, Hadidi said he has been keen on the election of a president, adding that the cooperation has arrived on Monday. He said today we are heading towards a white end to open a new chapter in relations and to begin this phase together. For his part, Ra'i received Hariri and welcomed him, saying, you are a man of courage and determination. And he was, it was a clear reference to Hariri's initiative to endorse MP Michel Aoun for the post of president last week. Prime Minister Tamam Salam received in separate meetings at the Grand Sarai, Marada movement leader MP Slaimain Frangiyi and Saad Hariri. He briefed Salam on the preparations for the electoral session scheduled for Monday to elect a president. Frangi and Hariri did not make a statement after their meeting with Salam. On Friday, Salam received presidential hopeful head of the change and reform bloc, MP Michel Aoun, who met with the leader of the Progressive Socialist Party, Walid Jamalat and Clemenceau, before meeting the premier. Now, Salam has not yet made any statement in terms of Hariri's endorsement for the Aoun uh, for the top state post, but Hariri did formally endorse Aoun nomination last week. Lebanon has been without a president since the term of Michel Slaiman ended in May of 2014. Lebanese Jews leader Walid Jamlat says that the majority of his political bloc, the Democratic Gathering, will support Christian leader Michel Aoun to become president of Lebanon at a vote to be held. Jamlat spoke to reporters after a meeting with Aoun on Friday. Lebanon has been without a president, a position reserved for a Maronite Christian for almost two years and a half now. It appears all but certain that Hezbollah ally Aoun will become president under an unlikely proposal tabled by Sunni leader Hariri, whose Saudi-backed coalition opposed Hezbollah for years. Shablat said there were some in his progressive socialist party and in the umbrella who do not support Aoun's candidacy, but the majority does. The Lebanese presidency has been vacant since Michel Slaiman's term ended in May 2014, pending a deal on who should succeed him. The United States is accusing the Syrian regime of using starvation as a weapon of war a war crime under the Geneva Conventions, stepping up the rhetoric against Bashar al-Assad and his Russian backers. Rejecting the Kremlin claims that attacks on Aleppo have stopped. A U.S. official said the regime has rejected U.N. requests to deliver aid to eastern Aleppo, using starvation as a weapon of war. The language mirrors the Geneva Convention's prohibition against starving civilians as a method of warfare. Aleppo's quarter of a million residents have been besieged and bombarded for months, prompting international outcry. Washington is currently weighing further sanctions against Syria and a push for justice at the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Coming up next, U.S. Democratic Presidential Hillary Clinton calls on the FBI to release her email server.
Welcome back. You're watching the English News on Future Television. A Saudi-led coalition airstrikes killed at least 10 civilians in a battleground town southeast of Yemen's third city of Taiz, the rebels and a medic said. The rebel-controlled Saba <laughs> News <laughs> said that 10 people were killed and 7 wounded when the strikes hit residential buildings in the town of Salo, where clashes with government forces are raging on. It said rescue workers are still recovering bodies from under the rubble. A doctor at the town's public hospital said it had received the bodies of 15 dead and was treating 7 wounded. A local official loyal to the Saudi-backed government said a child and seven women were among 11 people killed when two coalition airstrikes hit three adjacent homes by mistake. The Saudi-led coalition has come under mounting international criticism for the highest civilian death toll from the bombing campaign it launched in support of President Abdurrabu Mansour Hadi's government in March of last year. Iraqi officials say that security forces foiled an attack by Daesh extremists on the city of Ramadi, capital of the western province of Anbar. The reported thwarted attack led to 11 arrests and comes after a string of diversionary attacks by the extremists since the start two weeks ago of a massive offensive against Daesh in Mosul. Iraqi forces arrested 11 Daesh members who were planning to attack the city from the suburb of Al-Tash on the southern edge of Ramadi, according to Captain Ahmed Al-Dulaymi of the Anbar police. Iraqi forces retook Ramadi from ISIS earlier this year. Mine clearing and reconstruction efforts are underway, but few civilians have returned. Anbar Provincial Council says that the 11 arrested had confessed to planning an attack on the city. <laughs> U.S. Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton is calling on the FBI to release all new information in its probe of her private email server and says she did not think the agency would change its conclusion in July not to prosecute her. Great. Good afternoon. I'd like to say a few words and then take your questions. I have now seen Director Comey's letter to Congress. We are 11 days out from perhaps the most important national election of our lifetimes. Voting is already underway in our country. So the American people deserve to get the full and complete facts immediately. The director himself has said he doesn't know whether the emails referenced in his letter are significant or not. I'm confident whatever they are will not change the conclusion reached in July. Therefore, it's imperative that the Bureau explain this issue in question, whatever it is, without any delay. So I look forward to moving forward uh, to focus on the important challenges facing the American people, winning on November 8th, and working with all Americans to build a better future for our country. Thank you. Okay. Start with right here. Have you or any of your advisors heard from uh, Comey or anyone else at the FBI today? And are you concerned at all that these new emails that they say they've found will in any way reveal classified information that you sent or received? No, I, I, we have not been contacted by anyone. Uh, first, we knew about it is, I assume, when you knew about it, when uh, this letter uh, sent to Republican uh, members of the House was released. So we don't know the facts, which is why we are calling on the FBI to release all the information uh, that it has. Uh, even Director Comey noted that this new information may not be significant, so let's get it out. Secretary Clinton. You have 11 days to go. What would you say to a voter who right now will be seeing you and hearing what you're saying, saying, I didn't trust her before, I don't trust her anymore right now, and they're heading to the ballot box tomorrow? You know, I think people a long time ago made up their minds about uh, the emails. I think that's factored in to uh, what people think, and uh, now they're choosing a president. So I would urge everybody to get out and vote early in all the states that uh, have early voting because I think Americans want a president who can lead our country, who can get the economy working for everyone, not just those at the top, and who can bring our country together. I offer that. I can do that. Uh, and I'm very confident that the American people know that. And uh, we're going to continue to discuss what's at stake in this election because I believe uh, that it's one of the most consequential elections ever. Secretary, Secretary. Clinton. 
Thanks very much. Secretary Clinton, there are some reports that this, uh, these emails were found on devices that belong to your aide. Uh, Huma Abedin and her um, husband, Anthony Weiner, have you spoken to Huma? Was she able to give you any information about that? You know, we've heard these rumors. We don't know what to believe, and I'm sure there will be even more rumors. That's why it is incumbent upon the FBI to tell us what they're talking about, Jeff, because right now your guess is as good as mine, and I don't think that's good enough. So we've made it uh, very clear uh, that uh, uh, if they're going to be sending uh, this kind of letter uh, that uh, is uh, only going originally to Republican members of the House, that they need to share whatever facts they claim to have with the American people. And that's what I expect to happen. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. He's urging Americans to reflect on the surprise. That was Britain's decision to leave the EU and vote in the U.S. presidential election on November 8th. Her video entitled No Regrets has been funded by Humanity Full Hillary. Here it is. You know, I've done a few things that I've regretted in my life, and you probably have too. But I think those things would pale in comparison to the regret you'll feel after November the 8th if you don't vote. You know, no one really thought that Great Britain would leave the European Union, but it did. And this was not only a hit to our economy, but to our humanity, because this was a vote cast in fear rather than hope. Don't make the same mistake we did. Please, make sure you vote so you don't have abstainers regret. Because love must trump hate. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our headlines. Future movement, Saad Hariri, the leader, urges everyone to cooperate for the well interest of Lebanon, pointing to a new chapter that will be open this Monday with the election of a president. Prime Minister Tamam Salam receives in separate meetings both at the Grand Sarai, Marada movement leader MP Slaiman Fanjia, as well as Hariri. The United States is accusing the Syrian regime of using starvation as a weapon of war, a crime that is considered a war crime under the Geneva Conventions. Those are your Saturday headlines live on Future Television. Thank you for tuning in and stay tuned for Serge Benferi with a very special guest. Take care.